What's going on YouTube, it's Cosloscope. I'm back with another video. In today's video, I'm showing you guys why you guys need to stop using that weird creepy tab called Blur and only use Blur Gallery. Yes, I repeat, stop using that filter Blur tab. That is probably the most uh, just non-usable thing you can use in Photoshop. See how when you use any of these blurs without Blur Gallery, you can't set points to have a radiance of blurs. It's just bad, just stop stop using it it's just look at that it's just dumb all right so we're gonna go to blur gallery after you see me just struggling to get a nice blur on my subject it's just so hard to do that with blur so let's go on to blur gallery all right so i go to field blur right there yeah i'm just showing you guys filter blur gallery field blur okay let's go on field blur and see with field blur see that point right there i can set my own points a blur that i want so i put one at the bottom and I put one at the top to start it off. Now the bottom point is obviously going to be the most blurred. And the top point is going to be the, the least blurred. But as I have it, I'm making a smooth transition. So with Blur Gallery, you can just pick your own little points that you want to use. And then set your, you can set the blur on each little point that you want. Just use that little circle and just either increase it or decrease it. But always remember, whatever is closest to what you want to be in focus is going to have the least amount of blur. Whatever is farther away from focus is going to have the most blur, right? So it's not very hard to understand. And you can even use light bokeh, but this is just the first video I'm introducing blur. So I'm not going to go over light bokeh. But light bokeh gives you a nice, uh, nice like set of lights that help out your source, especially if you're doing like a theme or something like that, a theme or a composition, they can help out your source. So this is why you have to start using Blur Gallery. It's really not too difficult to understand. Now we're not done because with Blur Gallery, you do have a bunch of different options that you can pick from within it. There's like Iris Blur, Field Blur, Tilt Shift. So now I'm going to show you guys Tilt Shift within Blur Gallery, all right? But I'm just showing you guys again, me struggling to use Gaussian Blur. Look at that silly Gaussian Blur. Oh my goodness. There's no variance. I can't do anything with it. I, I think I got so mad at my screen, I just had to type stop. I, I was trying to type stop. Look at me. Stop. Okay. Let's stop using Gaussian Blur and anything in that blur category. I have to stress this to you guys. So let's do it with Tilt Shift. All right, so blur gallery and going to tilt shift in my own words. In my own words, I would say all that you need to know about tilt shift is it's very good because anything in between those two center lines, those solid lines are going to be not blurred. And this is really good for getting a nice horizon point and just getting a nice gradient of blur. So anything in between those two solid lines aren't gonna be blurred. And then you see on the outside, anything that is between the solid line and the dash line is going to be blurred. And now you can set your blur from the center point, clicking on that circle and dragging to where you want, or you can go on the right, as you see I'm in the tab, blurring it out. And the great thing about this is every line can be moved. So you can really set your horizon points and your foreground points and whatever you want to set. And it's going to always just be really consistent and really smooth. Now, say you were to want a really uh, drastic gradient, you could also move those dash lines and you could even move them off of the entire you can move them off of your entire project and into like infinity but that's probably not what you need to do but that's just how to explain tilt shift to you guys real quick all right now the last part of blur guy that i'm gonna go over today is filter and going to path blur okay path blur it lets you do pretty much a motion blur it'll be what motion blur is but it's like motion blur on steroids okay so all you have to do again is set your own little points that you want to make and the cool thing about this is you can literally create your own shapes of motion that you want to use so i just think that's super cool and then you can set your speeds and everything that you want to do with that and watch this like after i'm doing this i'm going to show you guys you can even make more than one motion if you want to and this can really just start mixing things up with your motion blur so this will be like super sick if you guys have like like crazy going fast effects or stuff like that so make sure you guys also uh tap into this this section as well on motion blur or it's not motion blur on path blur Gah! okay path blur all right now i'm going to put everything all together so you guys are just going to see me just putting everything together so the first thing that i'm using is tilt shift and i use tilt shift on pretty much just the background or it's the background because i'm going from the horizon point pretty much to the end and you guys are going to just see me adjusting 
and adjusting until I get to that right point that I want to get to. But uh, pretty much I just combined everything all together. So I'm gonna stop talking and just let you guys see the rest of what I did. Make sure you guys uh, drop a like if this helped you out down below. If you guys wanna see me explain this even more in depth on future things, just uh, also let me know. And I appreciate everybody tuning in. Until next time, it's been Castle Scoped, and I'm out, y'all. Peace. Thank you.